Welcome to Mishnah study, Masechet Demai, new Masechet, first Mishnah, first Perek. We'll get a quick introduction, and it's going to be based off what Harambam explains in the first Mishnah. Demai, what is Demai? Literally, if you break down the word, it's Da Mai. This is what? We're not sure. It's a safek what this is. So we have fruits, we have vegetables, whatever that may be, and we're not sure if Trumot and Ma'asrot were taken from it. And this has a special status, this fruit, when, you know, with these, uh, these, this produce, where we're not 100% sure that things weren't taken from it, but at the same time, it's going to be a little bit of a quasi-state because you may not have to give everything, as we'll discuss. So you have these fruits, and we're not sure if Matinot Hashem, if the Trumot and Ma'asrot were taken from it or not. So what do we do with this? First and foremost, we need, the law is, we need to separate two things. And that is tirumat ma'asir, right? Which is the ma'asir from the ma'asir. And we need to separate ma'asir sheni. Now, if you remember in general, all the rules of the produce, when it comes to all produce, we have, we have to separate in general. First is tiruma gidola, right? That's first, that's 2% goes to the kohen. Then we have ma'asir rishon, right? Which is 10% of what's left goes to levi. Then we have we swap off in years, either ma'asir sheni or ma'asir ani, depending on what year it is. And that's really what needs to be given. From the ma'asir rishon that we gave to the levi, the levi has to take 10% of that 10%, right? Which ends up being 1% of the total, and give that piece to the kohen. So basically now we're saying on demai, right? We're not sure what was given. Right? In general, you're supposed to give all those items. Right? Over here, when it comes to demai, we're going to say, Tiruma, we're going to leave aside for a second. You don't have to give the Tiruma. Ma'aserishon, you don't have to give Ma'aserishon. But from that Ma'aserishon, the Ma'aser Mina Ma'aser, right? the 10% of that 10% that the Levi would have given to the Kohen, you need to take off that. So 1% you need to give to the Kohen. And Ma'aser Sheni, you also need to go ahead and separate and eat in Jerusalem, right? As all the laws of Ma'asir Shani as they apply. Now, why? Why aren't we obligated to give Ma'asir Rishon? Why aren't we obligated to give Ma'asir Ani? How come we don't have to give Tiruma? So let's just clarify all that first before we jump into the Ma'asir So firstly, you don't have to separate Ma'asir Rishon and Ma'asir Ani. Ma'asir Rishon usually goes to Levi. Ma'asir Ani goes to Levi. Why? Because we have a rule. And that is... When it comes to monetary law, if you're going to take money from me, you need to prove that it's yours. Whoever is trying to extract the money needs to prove that it's his. And because this is a suffix, the demai is a suffix, you know, Ma'asir Rishon may have been given from it. Ma'asir Ani may have been given from it. We're not sure. So I, I would basically tell the Levi or tell the Ani, prove to me. Prove to me that Ma'asir Levi wasn't taken, Ma'asir Shinnushon wasn't taken from you. Prove to me that Ma'asir Ani wasn't taken from you. And because it's impossible to prove, so therefore, it's not required to give. But when it comes to Ma'asir Mina Ma'asir, right, the Turumat Ma'asir, that 1% that we do obligate you to give, we take that 1% and give it to the Kohen, right? Why? Because if Levi doesn't separate that, everything is Tevil. Tevil is... The, the, the fruit itself, before it was tithed, before any Turumot and Ma'asur were taken from it, because the Turumot is still inside, we consider it Tevel, and Tevel, the punishment is so, is, is so grave, and it's mitabi deshamayim, right? A person is liable to death from heaven, right? Meaning the Betin doesn't put a, pers put a person to death, but HaKadosh Baruch Hu said this person, you know, can die from something like this. So, because of the Isur, because of the Chumrah involved, therefore we say that you need to separate that 1% and give that to the Kohen. Now, why don't we say that you have to give the original Tiruma, Tiruma Gidola, the original 2% that you give to the Kohen? That's also, if you don't separate that, it's also Mitabi Deshamayim. So over here, we point, Rambam points out that we're Mekel when it comes to Tiruma Gidola because everybody separates Tiruma Gidola. At least when they instituted this law in the times of Yohanan Kohen Gadol, he was the one that instituted it. He was Metaken, the laws of the, or everything of Demai. He traveled and he sent in all of Gud Israel and he saw Matzah She'en Maplishim Ela Tirumah Everyone separated only Tirumah Gedola. 
So the Turumah Gedula was taken out. We know for a fact that Turumah Gedula was taken out. Ma'aser Rishon, we don't have to give because we tell the Levi, prove it. But what the Levi would have having given to the would have had to give to the Kohen, we do require that. And that's 1% that now the person, the owner of the Demai needs to separate and, uh, separate and take off. Ma'asir Ani, we do not obligate. Ma'asir Sheni, though, which is 10% that you need to take off and take to Jerusalem, mean it that yourself. We say you should do that. Why? Because you're eating it yourself, right? No one's taking that from you. So you'll separate that and eat it yourself. Remember all these principles. Now, that's a quick introduction to, the, to, the, to, to what Demai is. This whole Masechet, we're going to be speaking about the laws of Demai, leniencies of Demai. We'll separate how, we'll discuss how to separate. If you're eating by someone's house and you know they may have Demai, are you allowed to go out, go to the house? Are you allowed to eat there? If you do go eat there, what do you do? How do you make sure that everything's going to be kosher when you're eating it? All these laws, that's what we're going to speak about in this Masechet, and we're going to jump into the first Mishnah now. The first Mishnah speaks about lenient fruits of Demai, meaning what? That there are certain fruits that we know aren't usually planted. Meaning people don't own these fruit trees in their backyard. If there's fruit trees like this, we're going to assume that they're Hefker. And we have a law by Hefker, if something is Hefker, that it's not obligated in Turumot Ma'asrot. So if there's something is not obligated in Turumot Ma'asrot, Right? If these fruits aren't usually planted, these fruits are always hefker, so we're going to say that there's no issue of demai, because demai is something that's obligated to the Motor Masrat, and we're not sure if it was given or not. Over here, we have some fruits over here that are listed in our Mishnah that are hefker and aren't even obligated in Tirumot and Masrat. Hakalim Sheba Demai. Hashitin, Vaharimin, Vahuzradin, Uvnot Shuach, Uvnot Shet Shikma, Venovot Timra, Vagufran, Vanispa. Right, so as we explained, right, everything we have over here, the first part of Hanabam, we explained in our introduction already, so we're going to jump into the next slide. And that is Hakalim Sheba Demai, right, these lenient, Right, these leniencies of demai, all these fruits that we have a leniency by, are generally hefker, as we explained. And what are they exactly? What are these fruits? So I'm going to explain based off of Kapach's uh, translation. In his, his footnotes on the bottom, he has some uh, Latin, uh, I guess, translations of what exactly everything is. So I looked them up, and I'm going to try to do the best to just explain them into, uh, I guess, our fruits as we know them. So what are they? The first one is shitin. Shitin are a wild fig. Virimin are jujube fruits. Uzradin are crab apples. Ubnot shuach, it's a type of white uh, fig, right? That would come up, it, would, it, it produces fruits once every three years. Each three, every three years it produces fruit. Ubnot shikma, right? These are also some type of wild fig that would be found there in the, in the mountains or in the, in the deserts, right? And the point over here is that very few people actually plant these for themselves. Benovlot temara, those are the dates that fall off the palm tree, right? When it gets windy out, right? So those are also, also hefker. Begufnan, what's gufnan? It's a type of um, vegetable that's similar to a dill. Mitzpa, Right, Harambam says it's known as a caper fruit. Right, so that's all everything that are we have leaning by the might. Behuda in the town in the area of Yehuda, right, in Yehuda v'Shomron, Judea and Samaria, right. So that you know in that territory. So also, so over here, these would be also have scared these items. These three, what are they? Uh, Haog is sumac of Eretz Israel, right. So it would be it's a, you know a reddish you know fruit that's again eaten. Hometz is vinegar. Right, and over here, the Talmud, the Yerushalmi, the Gemara Yerushalmi actually points out that this, right, when when is when is vinegar hefker? Today, everybody makes again vinegar from you know it was made from wine. Wine's not hefker. So the vinegar vinegar that was mentioned is in a time when they would make the vinegar not from wine itself. They would make it from the sediment of the wine, right, the bottom of the barrel. That's something that people would make hefker, right? They would make that ownerless. It's not mine. I don't need it, right? So because it's hefker. Right again, it's going to be patur from turumot masrot, and therefore, it's lenient by demai. You don't have to separate anything of demai. With dufra, 
sorry, Kuzbar, Kuzbar is coriander, so those are the three. Now Rabbi Uda says, Kol shitim piturot, right, um, also, okay, I should mention over here, that Hanbam points out that, and is you know, earlier, why are we being mekel when it comes to all these fruits? You know, so what? It is still a safek. It's a safek that, you know, these fruits are safek, they're hefker, safek, they're not hefker. You know, maybe they are owner. I don't know. I found them there. Maybe it belongs to an owner. Now I can just go ahead and, and not separate tunumot and masrot from it. So if it was regular tunumot, if a person found, you know, picked these on his own from a, you know, then okay, that, that's one thing. But over here, Right? If, 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 you're, if a person knows they're not Efker, he must separate Trumot and Masrot. If they are Efker, he's patu from separating Trumot and Masrot. Over here, though, we have two Sefikot. One is, right, the first Sefik is maybe they were Efker, maybe they're not Efker. Okay, now, even if you say they're from the Shamur, they're from something that's not Efker, and they would be obligated in Trumot and Masrot, maybe the person who had these that it came from actually separated the Tunumot and Masrot themselves, right? That's what Demai is. Demai is we're not sure if the person who had it, who gave it to us, separated the Tunumot and Masrot. So because there's two Sefekot over here, right? We have a Teres Sefekot Lehakel. Two Sefekot were Mekel. This is actually a very important principle. It's called a Sefek Sefeka, also in rabbinic language today. It comes up often. It comes up often, and, and uh, Hachamim are really told a lot of kulot on this. And it's a, a very important halachic phrase to know. And it's something that's used throughout the halacha. It's called a safik sefika. And that's why all these fruits over here that we're not sure if it came from Efkir or not, were able to be mekel because of the safik sefika. Now I'll just continue on to the Bihuda, right? What does the Bihuda say? The Bihuda says, Kol harimin pitur, uh, all, all of the kol shitin piturot, right? All of the shitin that we mentioned, the shitin were these, uh, figs, these wild figs, are patur, except from dufra, right? Dufra is a type of fig which would uh, produce, if, uh, a fig tree that would produce fruits twice a year. And then it continues, and all of the rimin, all of the jujube fruits are patur from demai, except from rime shikmona, a place called shikmona, I guess over there, right? It wouldn't be hefker, everyone, everyone knew it wasn't hefker. And all the mesut, all the binot shikma of peturot, right? Binot shikma, we mentioned, were the uh, also, wild those type of wild fig. Those are also all patur, except for the misutafot, the ones that were split, they were cracked, right? These types of te'anim, because according to the Bihuda, all of these are found in gardens, and therefore they're going to be hayav and demai. Halacha is not like the Bihuda. Rather, as we mentioned, that anything that grows is, it, we, we assume it's hazaka, that is from the hefker, and we assume that it was only planted derech mikre, and it's not going to be hayav in demai. That's the first mishnah, and we will continue, God willing, with next class.